Broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. This is just a, a quick sound check. Tamara, are you with us? Yes, I am. <laughs> Yay, okay. Can you hear me? Yes, very well. Can you, okay. hear, can you hear us? All right. Okay, very good. Yes. Everyone should be on now, and we will begin our webinar. Um, I'd like to welcome everyone today. My name is Alice Wolf. I'm the Manager of Education and Publications here at Madeira USA. Our webinar today is um, suggesting that you try substituting specialty thread into stock designs. Um, we'd like to encourage you to, um, to give this a try um, by substituting these threads into your designs. And I'm pleased um, to be joined here at Madeira USA by Nancy Minnie, who's our resident embroiderer and backing specialist who has a lot of information to share with you. Nancy, thank you for spending your afternoon with us. My pleasure. And we are also joined remotely um, by Tamara Valley, who is the owner, digitizer, and designer at Creations by Cara. Um, this is a new, um, well, for us, it, it was a new discovery, a stock design company based in the state of Washington. Um, Tamara, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon as well. I'm well, glad to be here. Um, we've also heard from our friends at Dakota Collectibles. They've sent us um, several designs that Nancy will speak to um, because she felt they lent themselves particularly well to, um, to our specialty threads. Um, just a reminder for those who have not uh, participated in one of our webinars before, please feel free to type in any questions that you might have. We'd like to try to answer as many pos as possible in real time. Uh, we should probably have a little bit of time at the end of the webinar. We'll try to answer all that we possibly can. Um, for anyone who's wondering, uh, the webinar is being recorded so that you will be able to see it and hear it afterwards. And we also have a printed version available to you. There will be an email going out to all of you uh, with links to the things that I'm mentioning. And at the end of the webinar, there will be specials, um, special offers for you, and there'll be links to that as well. So here is a look at the things that we are going to be covering today. Um, these are the topics um, that you should expect to learn about. We'd like you to know what your thread options are, especially those threads that are particularly easy to use, that don't require a needle change, that there's nothing to be done to the machine. Um, we'd like you to know how adding a specialty thread can affect your pricing in some cases, and at the very least, ensure customer loyalty, because you'll be able to produce something that nobody else can. Um, We'd like to show how you've got more than simply colors to choose from. You've got shading, texture, sparkle, shine, and we'd like to point out how important it is to set yourself apart from your competition. Because every time a customer is admired by someone in the general public, you have a chance to further the interest in your work. And we sometimes think of your customers as walking billboards. So those are the things that we are going to be covering today. By taking you through a series of stock designs and showing where we have introduced a specialty thread, you'll see how much different a standard design can look. Metallic can bring designs to life, matte finish can add shading, a thick wool embroidery thread can give a hand embroidered look, and if safety is a concern for your customers, a uh, fire resistant thread is 40 weight and can be substituted right in. Um, so I think that you will be surprised to see how easily some of these threads lend themselves. This is a list of the threads that we'll be talking about today. Um, Nancy and Tamara will be uh, referring to them throughout. Um, it's a long list. Madeira offers um, an incredible amount of specialty threads. And for those of you who have been um, suffering from the fear factor, one of our goals today is to eliminate that so you feel comfortable and eager to try out some of these threads. So this is the list, and you'll see it again at the end of the threads that we're talking about. And now um, I'd like to uh, turn the webinar over to Tamara from Creations by Kara. Um, Tamara, would you please walk us through this design and where you've made changes to it? Yeah. Um, 
This design was done with Poly Neon 40, Frosted Matte, and Super Twist. Um, in this design, the outline and the flowers are the Super Twist. And of course, it says here, um, a 9014 needle. And it actually, um, I didn't change anything about it. Um, it actually stitched out very well. Um, the Frosted Matte is the pink. Um, which I think really added a lot of dimension to the design uh, with the shiny on top and um, just the pink as the background. And then the mane and the hair here, um, the white and the light pink up here is actually just the regular poly neon. Um, so the only time I really had to do a needle change was with a super twist. Um, other than that, it really stitched out very beautifully. I'd like, before we go to the next slide, I just want to point out that um, we added, just to make this easy for everyone watching, uh, the needles that were used. Um, in some cases, uh, 7511, which is your standard needle, is used and not changed even for a different type of thread. And you can probably see that those, the images of those needles are kind of grayed out. But where the needle is dark, like for the Super Twist 30, um, we do suggest um, a needle change there. Although even though we suggest a needle change, I think, Tamara, didn't you say that you got these results without even changing a needle? Uh, yeah, this might have been one I didn't change the needle on. Okay. Um, yeah. Oh, so and I don't think I even slowed down the machine for Super Twist either, so. Yeah, very often you can get that um, Super Twist to run really well. I do suggest for the beginners, um, embroiderers, if you're trying it out, um, just going to that larger eye needle gives you a little bit of um, less chance of it giving you trouble. Yeah. Tamara? Okay. Yes. This um, is a one color design. Um, I use Super Twist throughout this design. Um, I changed nothing about it. Um, they're recommending a 9014 needle. I don't remember changing the needle on this one. Uh, it stitched out beautifully. Um, the final design really uh, shines and has a lot of texture. Um, I think it changed it um, a lot with just changing the thread um, and nothing else was changed with it at all. We had the benefit of seeing these stitch outs live. Um, uh, looking at the, the monitor, I know that our friend Eric Campbell, I think, said that photography is the enemy of embroidery. It's it's very true because sometimes the beauty of these designs, the the sparkle, is hard to capture on, in a photograph. But this is a very very uh, subtle but but beautiful design. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this design was stitched out with poly neon. Um, the blue in the background is just the poly neon. The accents with the blue accent is actually super twist um, to give it texture and depth. And then the stars in the background are super twist as well. Um, again, this design stitched out very easily, uh, beautifully. Nothing was altered in the design. Um, and I really think it added a lot of dimension to have the poly neon in the back and then the shiny sparkle um, as a highlight. And then of course, sparkle in the stars. So, um, Tamara, yeah. did you have to change bobbins at all or was that something that you just left alone? Um, I left it alone. Okay. Um, yeah, in this one, I just left the bobbin alone, and I actually did a black bobbin in it. Did, do you black, wind your own, or fabric. do you use pre-wound bobbins? I use pre-wound bobbins most of the time. Okay. Um, I'm I'm responding to a question that came in um, asking about what weight the bobbin thread should be. Your your um, pre-wound bobbins are perfectly fine to use. We don't recommend changing the weight of the bobbin thread at all for any of these threads. So in terms of the bobbin, you should stick with what you would normally use. And that's just a simple rule of thumb when it comes to embroidery. Uh, whatever bobbin you're using is the same bobbin you're going to use uh, for all your threads, no matter what, for the most part. The only time you would actually change your bobbin thread is if you were doing freestanding lace, um, where the backside of that embroidery can be seen. Um, and the other option, of course, is, you know, if you're on a dark fabric and you have, and you're using dark top thread, you have the option of switching over to a black thread. Um, but most of your embroidery is done with white bobbin thread and you don't have to change the bobbin thread compared to the top thread. Okay. Yeah, this design um, is a very simple design, very easy to stitch out. 
Um, but adding the super twist to this design, I think, really added a lot of pizzazz to it. Um, and again, nothing was changed. I think I used a white bobbin with this. Um, it just, it turned out very well. It added a lot of sparkle to this design, and it just stitched out beautifully. What type of stitches are these, Tamara? This is just actually a straight stitch. Um, okay. It's and just all single line stitching. And in looking for the designs that you did put the specialty threads in, was that, are those designs with those particular stitches that work particularly well? I think so. Um, a lot of straight stitches work well, especially with, um, you know, metallics. Um, I chose designs that, I, actually I chose them for the artistic value, but yeah, you, you don't want something really heavy or very complicated, I think, with these, with this thread. Okay. Okay. This now in this... particular is really um, outstanding in person, um, this freestanding ornament. Go ahead. Yeah, this was done with the metallic FS. Um, I had to use a 7511 metallic needle. Um, my machine was slowed down to about 500. Um, this one, of course, I used, I had to wind my bobbins on this one because it is freestanding lace. So I wound the same color um, for the uh, bobbin that was used on the top. Um, it stitched out beautifully. Um, and we also used um, the cutaway wash away so that once it washes away, it's just a freestanding uh, metallic ornament. And it actually turned out really, really beautiful. This really did. It, it's amazing to think that this is all metallic thread without anything else behind it. Um, it is. And the metallic threads, not only, <clears throat> excuse me, not only are they available in the golds and silvers, there's coppers and um, some darker black gray type metallics that really um, look beautiful when they're embroidered out. Tamara, what, um, what is the size of this ornament? Someone just asked. Um, this was, I think this one was the four by five, four by five inches. Okay, and I just wanna throw in here that uh, one question that came in is where can we find these beautiful designs? Are they available for purchase? Yes, they absolutely are um, at Creations by Kara, and we'll have a uh, special that she's offering at the end of the of the webinar. Okay. Yeah, Next. there's a, there's a whole collection of these actually. So, of the ornament as well. Oh yeah, there's about. Twelve ornament designs in that collection. So. Oh, okay. Twelve. That's a lot. Okay. We just saw the one here, but that's <laughs> uh, that's uh, good to know. Speaking of collections, I know that. Uh, did you say there were four in this one? Yes, there are four actual designs. There's yes, there are four designs that are like this in this collection, and. Um, we used the frosted mat with this because I wanted to kind of give it like a cottony. I thought it would look good maybe on a quilt with a cottony like vintage look and it just turned out really, really pretty. Um, yeah, and there's about four of these um, heart florally designs in this collection. Um, and again, I changed nothing about it. Um, it's all single stitch. There's a couple um, step stitches in here, but it's a real light design and it turned out real beautiful in this thread. It sure did. It also, I think, would lend itself to the glow-in-the-dark thread that I know you'll be touching on later, but you could certainly see this on uh, linens that are used outside on a patio, and as the evening progressed, <laughs> this would just kind of have a beautiful glow to it. Um, Tamara, just going back quickly, there is a question about the type of thread. Did you use metallic thread in the bobbin for the Christmas ornament? I did. Um, I wanted it to be double-sided, and when you're doing freestanding lace like this, in my opinion, um, the back side, I want to look as beautiful as the front. So I used um, the bronze color bobbin with the bronze and then the darker gray um, metallic with the background. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, this design um, was with frosted mat. Um, we used a, a regular needle. Um, I thought the frosted mat uh, would lend to the beauty of the design by making it look a lot more sketchier. Uh, this design is very sketchy um, anyway, and I think it just made it look like a pencil drawing even more so with the mat. Um, 
and I just I really liked the results of this. Are these the same type of stitches that that were in some of the earlier designs you talked about? Um, these stitches are these are all straight stitches and they're done manually, so they were kind of like drawn on the screen. Um, so they're they're different than the other ones, but yes, they're all actual straight stitching. There's no fill stitches in this design at all. It almost looks like some of the blue was done freehand, was it? Oh, the whole design is done freehand. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this one, uh, is, to me, seems a little similar to it. Yes. Um, this design, I chose to do the frosted matte for the outline to make it look more pencily and sketchy. And then uh, the super twist to just give it a little bit of glitz and glamour for the eyeshadow and the lip accents. Um, nothing else was changed with it. Um, and I think it did really, it looks really very good. Um, and it added a lot of dimension to the design. Um, this was actually just a single stitch, most of it some satin, small satin stitching in here. Um, this was not done um, drawn on screen. This was actually done click mouse, but um, yeah, it turned out really beautiful. It did. I bet there's not a lot of stitches in the design, but it's it's really uh, impressive. Yeah, this design was actually meant to be done on t-shirts and lighter weight um, fabrics and fun things like that. So, I think it's a perfect contrast between the matte finish and the sparkly thread. Um, not only you know using the black frosted matte um, for the drawing, like it was done in a pencil, it's almost like picking up your pastels with a little glitter in it to, on the lips and the eyes. I think that was such a, um, a great use of the specialty threads. And then going from light and airy to your next design, which is equally impressive, <laughs> but for a different reason. Um, and I hope that the photography has captured what you've done here. Uh, if you could describe that, please. Yeah, what we did was we did a side-by-side -side comparison of what um, adding a little bit of metallic or some other specialty thread um, to a design that um, was actually meant for poly neon and the different um, the big difference it can make and the one on the left hand side was done in all poly neon um, and the one on the right hand side we used the metallic um, and just the background the beige background color was done with a metallic um, I think it was more like a, a coppery metallic I added a lot of sparkle to the design very easy to stitch. This is a very light fill in the background. Um, and then the rest is just poly neon, all the accent um, and the shading colors. So it just, it, it changes the design a lot just by changing that one thread out. It's, it's very beautiful. Um, I'm going to throw out a question to both Tamara and Nancy, a question that came in regarding uh, the last design. I don't know if Morgan, you can go back, just one. Uh, que a question that came in, when stitching this very light design on a t-shirt, what kind of stabilizer would you use? I don't know if Tamara and Nancy would choose the same one, but uh, curious to learn, Tamara, what did you use? Um, or what would you suggest? I use all kinds, I use all kinds of different stabilizer. Um, if you were to put this design on a t-shirt, how would you go? Um, I may use Vilene, like a wash away or a very light, uh, you know, I can't even remember the name of it, but a very light stabilizer that you would just keep on there like a cutaway, but a very light one. Um, nothing too heavy because you don't want to be like ripping it away on there and stretching out the fabric. Right. I like the idea of a cutaway wash away because it, does, because it doesn't have a lot of stitches. It doesn't need a lot of stabilizing. And um, once you throw that through the laundry for the first time, um, all the wash, uh, the, the stabilizer actually washes away. And um, <clears throat> I think that's a, a good result when all is said and done. Okay, now we'll jump ahead to the, the bird. Okay. okay. Um, this design was another comparison design. Um, the one on the left was stitched with poly neon, um, and it's a beautiful design. Uh, the one on the right was stitched with all metallic. Um, I did slow the machine down for this one, uh, but the results were just 
very impactful. Um, the sparkle and shine uh, from this design was just wow. Once it um, once it stitched out, um, so it, it nothing needed to change except for maybe slowing down the machine. Um, other than that, it turned out really beautiful. Okay, and we have a final one for Tamara. Uh, this is again, I, I sound like I'm I'm promoting your work, which which I'm um, not too proud to do because it's very impressive. And these uh, dandelions, I think you said there was a set of twelve different designs in this one. Yes. Okay, and we ask you to try the, the glow in the dark and um, here again, if you want to talk about how you did it, it it's very, very beautiful. Yeah, we just uh, stitched it out normally. Uh, nothing really uh, needed to change. The design didn't change at all. It stitched out beautifully and I think um, the result of this would be so beautiful on um, you know, even bedding or a shower curtains. If you go in there at night in your bathroom and you see these beautiful flowers shining, sure. you know, or um, yeah, I, I really think it turned out very well. Or even outdoor outdoor pillows, like you were saying, when the, the evening comes. Yeah, I think this turned out really well and it stitched out beautifully. It was very, very simple to change out the thread. Okay, thank you. Um, now we're going to switch over to some designs that, uh, sorry, that were chosen. Um, what kind of stitching was used? Oh, sorry. A question <laughs> came in and almost escaped me. Uh, Tamara, what kind of stitching was used for the dotted lines? Those are candle wicking dots. Candle wicking dots. Can you go into a deeper explanation for anyone? Um... They're like little beads of beads of thread, so it's kind of like a star shape, but it makes a little beading. So they're little, they're they're raised up a little bit, and they're they're like little thread beads. Beads as opposed to beans, not a bean stick. <laughs> right, the beads. Yes, beads. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you, Tamara. Um, that it for questions for you. Now we're going to switch over to Nancy. I'm going to take a look at some designs that. Um, she looked at uh, on the Dakota collectible site and imagined how some could be transformed with some specialty thread. So we're going to hear from her now, hopefully, if her throat is holding it. Is holding it. <laughs> um, yeah, so I apologize if I'm hard to hear. Please let me know if you need something repeated. I'll be happy to do that. Um, just the worst case scenario um, about last night and today, my voice is kind of going away. Um, so I'm going to try and get through these. And again, just let me know if you're having a hard time hearing me. Uh, one of the things I did want to point out, um, Alice may have mentioned at the beginning about the handouts, and I want to make sure <clears throat> that you're aware that those are there. And one of the things that is available for you to view is a tensioning guide. And just like with your rayon and your polyester, the tensioning on those are different from each other. And the same is true when it comes to all of these specialty threads. And setting the um, proper tensioning for each of your threads is gonna be key to getting these threads to run well. Um, they're not all that much different from your typical rayon 40 and 50 weight, um, but you do wanna make sure that the tension is maintained. And where we're pointing out where you need to use a different needle, and only then is when we do recommend that, you know, if you're having issues running it, um, that you can switch over to that needle. So um, while I was saying that, you had time to um, enjoy viewing this cute little fireman here. And um, this was embroidered with our firefighter um, 40 weight thread. Firefighter 40 weight thread is actually a fire resistant thread made of aramid uh, thread. So, the reason why you would want to use this thread is if you're embroidering on something for somebody who is maybe in um, who any type of safety where fire um, could be a concern, whether that's aeronautics, um, firefighters, race car drivers, uh, maybe electricians and things like that. Um, so the design itself is certainly cute, um, but there is some safety behind this. And the point was, is that this is a stock design um, from Dakota Collectibles, simple design that was digitized for 40 weight rayon or polyester. And because this is a 40 weight thread, 
all I had to do was switch over to an 8012 needle because it's a little bit thicker because of the way it, it's made. It's a spun polyester, so a little bit hairy um, and a little bit thicker. Um, so just using the larger eye needle, I didn't have any trouble running this machine, uh, this particular design. Um, this design here from Dakota is a um, vintage looking golfer. Um, and I think frosted mat lends itself very well to the vintage look. Tamara mentioned early on about how it has a cotton look to it and that in and of, in and of itself is going to give a vintage look. Um, the great thing about frosted mat is it's, it's actually a polyester thread. Um, so you get the benefits of a polyester thread where you know, there's not going to be any fading with the UV lighting, um, just like your polyester. So it's going to withstand uh, the test of time, even if it's exposed to sunlight. Um, so this design, again, is a 40 weight stock design and just looked at it, um, chose it from Dakota and stitched it out. And as you can see, um, it looks very beautiful, filled in nice. Um, I had a lot of fun with this design. Um, from Dakota again, <clears throat> um, simple, um, probably, you know, a very simple design, some eggs and a carton. Um, I stitched it out in classic gray on 41st on the left side, um, very cute design and had a lot of possibilities. So I immediately thought of throwing that FS metallic in there. So that gold egg that's in there is FS, um, sorry, FS metallic 50. Um, didn't have to change the needle, but I also wanted to turn it into a logo. And I envisioned seeing something like this on the front of an apron that somebody might wear at the farmer's market as they're selling their eggs. And it gives a little bit of added um, bling to the design itself. Um, so I envisioned somebody's from Strawberry Meadow Farms. Um, with this on their apron, and it just really lent itself well. Um, this was a manual process that I did. I did literally stand in front of the machine. Um, I timed it on the first stitch out to know where I'd have to stop it to switch over the FS50, adjusted the tension just slightly, um, got a little tighter for the, the metallic 50, stitched out the gold egg, and then switched it back to the white egg. Um, so this is certainly not something that you would want to um, do in mass production. Um, however, it's great for the onesie twosies um, for your business um, to offer to your customers. So having something like this on display, if your customers come in and see what you got going on, um, can certainly, you know, set their ideas in motion and um, you'd be able to offer that to them. And while we're talking about specialty thread um, in stock designs, don't overlook the use of using a stock design to create a logo as Nancy has here. Um, when we saw the design of the dozen eggs, um, it doesn't get much more basic or simple than that. It was, and then it didn't take, um, much creativity on our part to think how we could turn it into something unique with the one gold egg. Uh, Nancy added the, the the wording up and top and bottom. And as long as you're not looking to do a logo for a uh, major, major national corporation, um, I think that uh, using stock designs for local businesses um, would work out really well and be a shortcut for you. Um, so this design here is um, obviously a St. Bernard with a cap on it. And the design, this design actually was picked out by Alice. And when I saw the design itself, I'm like, I started looking at all the colors. And there's nothing like um, having a design that has 22 different colors in it. Um, and you have a machine that maybe has 15 needles on it. So... I did kind of um, groan a little bit when this design came to me, but of course I took the challenge um, and worked with it and got the design. And obviously we wanted to throw um, some of the Vermilana 12 weight thread, Vermilana wool um, thread. It really has a hand, look, hand embroidered look to it. And um, 
originally when I started um, looking where we could put that wool thread in, I was only going to do the pom-pom that's on top of the cap. But as you can see on the right, we enlarged the picture of the cap. And once I started looking at the types of stitches that are in the cap itself, um, a lot of them look long enough to um, adapt to the 12 weight thick thread. And sure enough, um, I set the, um, the tension properly, used that 100 slash 16 needle and ran these three or four colors here that we have in that cap and the Bermelana ran awesome. And not only that, when you see this in life, I can, in real life, I can see it in the picture. I'm, I'm hoping that you can as well. Um, but that cap literally looks like a knitted cap sitting on top of that cute um, St. Bernard dog. Um, so again, you wanna keep in mind the tensioning is very important, especially with this type of a thread. Um, the thicker you go, the thinner you go, it's important to keep that tensioning correct. And hopefully, you know, when you're picking out your designs, you're gonna learn what works and what doesn't. Um, this is probably one of the more challenging threads, but as you can see here, it worked great. Um, I may not have picked out this design myself and tried it. Um, so when you are picking out your designs, you wanna be ready to play with the designs. You wanna be able to, to have the time to test them, see what's gonna work, what's not gonna work. And, you know, worst case scenario, you would stitch this design out in all rayon or polyester. Um, and either way, it's going to be beautiful. How did you adjust that tension, Nancy? Between yep. The so the tension for Bermelana is, you know, there's two ways of looking at tension. And one is, you know, obviously you're going to turn your knobs to the right to tighten and to the left to loosen. Um, some tensioning on the newer machines are automatic. So you would do this within the computer of the, uh, the machine itself. Um, but when, for a Bermelana, if you're doing the field test, you want it to be fairly hard to pull it. Uh, because what happens is if it's too loose, the Bermelana thread starts looping up within the, um, the needle arm and all the tensioning, and that's, that actually can cause your, um, your thread to break as well if it's too loose. Um, somebody else wrote in, um, were there any density issues with this? There actually were not. I did not change anything with this particular design except for the needle. It's such a thick thread that that 100 slash 16 needle is needed. And um, again, now if I had used the Bermelana on the dog itself, the face, the brown, it may not have worked as well. Um, but I, I did look at the design in the software that I have and and I could tell that those um, stitches that are on the cap itself were long enough um, to allow that thicker thread to fit right in. And because it, the density was so tight set for the 40 weight, it really scrunched those threads together and made that thread pop um, out so that it looks like it's three dimensional. I have a quick answer for a question that came in for the previous uh, design about frosted mat and does it hold its color in sunlight. Um, it was actually designed to hold its color um, and withstand a lot of um, exposure to the UV rays of the sun. It's color fast. It is um, like regular polyester. It can be washed in wash water that contains bleach. So it's a, it's a very popular thread among people that use it for artistic reasons. It looks like cotton, but as Nancy said, it acts like polyester. Um, and it was designed by Madeira in Germany for outside use, uh, we recommend it to customers for boat covers, patio cushions, things that are going to be exposed to a lot of sunlight. So, excuse me, Nancy. Good information. Um, here's another design um, from Dakota that I went in and uh, wanted to do something kind of different with the um, thicker Bermelana. Uh, Bermelana Co. is similar to the Bermelana that's the wool blend. This particular one is a cotton blend thread. So it looks and acts very similar to the wool blend as well. 
and it is a thicker 12 weight thread. Um, so I wanted to play around and see what would happen on a design, a stock design, if I were to say, take it and increase it, increase the size. Um, I did use the software to do that. Sometimes you can do that at the machine itself. Um, I increased the size of the design on the right hand side by one and a half or 150%. So what, and it kept, I kept the stitch count the same. So in theory, what happened was I not only enlarged the size of the design, I enlarged the length of the stitches themselves. So, um, so while this played with, you know, in effect, this changed the density of the design, the way I did it, I stitched it out on the left with the classic gray on 40, uh, beautiful, stitched out really nice. I love the fire effect to it. And of course, with the yellow, orange, and red, um, enhanced that as well took those same color choices and embroidered it with the Bermelana coat with the 100 slash 16 needle. Um, it was a nice design. Um, so again, picking out your designs, you kind of want to pick and choose what you did. What I did here is I wanted to find a solid design. It was all solid stitch, um, solid fill. Um, so I felt that when I enlarged it, it, the registration of the three different color choices were not going to be affected. Um, you are going to find sometimes some designs, um, when you go to enlarge them and stitch them out, they don't always line up right. So again, you want to take the time um, to, and learn what, what designs are going to work, which ones aren't, um, play around with them, and I encourage you to um, test them out, and the results um, is well worth the time that you spend. An interesting question that came in is uh, regarding machines and whether um, this work is being accomplished on home embroidery machines or commercial. Um, and I'm going to throw this at Tamara and Nancy with uh, with a with a caution, I guess. We must remain machine neutral, and so without talking about brands, I know that here Nancy works on two different types of machines and um, a single head and a Two head machine. Uh, Tamara, I believe, works on a single head machine. Um, what are your thoughts on whether these things can be accomplished on a home machine as well as commercial? Um, I actually used um, a home machine for a couple of these designs um, because it was just easier at that time. So I think it, it can be done on the home machine very easily. Absolutely. And if you're using a single color design, um, it even makes it easier. Um, as well. So the two commercial machines that we have here, that's, <clears throat> excuse me, um, they obviously work well. Um, if anything, there are times when the commercial machine can work better because they tend to not run as fast as your commercial machines. Um, I always throw out there for your commercial machine owners, if, you know, your machines are running 1,100 stitches a minute um, or more, and you want to make sure that you're not always running your machine at 1100 stitches, um, if at all, for the most part. I compare it to a sports car that just because it can go 200 uh, miles per hour doesn't mean you drive it at 200 miles an hour. Um, so slowing your machine down on a regular basis, whether it's using rayon or polyester 40 weight, um, 750 stitches a minute, 800 stitches a minute, um, and so on, um, you're actually going to find your designs look a little better um, by slowing the machine down. So when it comes to those home machines, as long as you're changing the needle for the thicker and thinner threads, um, you should be able to get them to work really well. Nancy, a question came in about um, whether this is this M is done in wool blend or cotton blend. The M is actually done in the cotton blend. Um, and I do see someone asked about the stabilizer that was used. Um, both of these were stitched out on, um, I apologize. The one on the left was switch, uh, stitched out on a twill um, because it was the rayon. With a cotton blend, I used a really heavy um, knit material, so very heavy sweater-like material. Uh, and because of that, it's a very stretchy material in and of itself. So I used a medium to heavyweight cutaway that, uh, stabilizer for that. The M on the right um, in real life looks so much like a hand embroidered um, letter that the Bermelana and the Bermelana Co, both of them, 
Um, if you get them, I've seen them used in designs in flowers and letters like this. And if you find the right design for that, um, it can look so much like a hand embroidered uh, piece. It's really pretty amazing. A uh, question came in about a single head and a double head machine. When we talk about heads, we're talking about the full apparatus that holds as many needles as the manufacturer has decided. Um, you can have a single needle, but you can have uh, you can have a six head machine that could have up to 15 needles on each head. So you'll see 15 head, 22 head machines that are used by big contract houses um, and for the majority of independent um, embroiders, you'll have a single head, but it could have six, nine, 12, 15 needles. Yep, so what I mentioned that we have a two head machine here, um, I could um, stitch out this letter M on the sweater in Burmalana on two heads, so I could do two at one time. And like Alice said, you have other machines that have multiple heads on them, the bigger guys. Um, somebody did ask if I hooped the letter on the sweater fabric. Absolutely. Um, you always always want to hoop um, the backing and the fabric before you embroider for for things that where you can hoop. I want to take just a break, just a second. <coughs> Let me just talk for a while. Okay. And I'm going to ask if you can hear me. No audio. Um, can someone write in? Yes, OK, sorry. Um, OK, so we've determined that the horns or antlers of a giraffe are, in fact, called ossicones. Um, and on the top of this particular giraffe, on the left side, we used 40 weight, just ran the whole design right through with 40. But then on the right side, Nancy substituted 60 weight uh, classic rayon, just for the little hairs at the top, and also for the black outline stitches around his face. And again, we're dependent on photography to give us um, to give us some, the ability to share what we see in the actual stitch out. But this one, I think you pretty much can see how the stitches tend to run together on the left and how on the right hand side, those little hairs are um, individualized. There's space between them. They're easily seen. And the face is actually a little bit more um, dramatic because of the outline of the thinner thread. Okay, let's go to the next. Um, so here is a design that was, um, this is by Creations by Kara. Um, this particular design I picked out because I wanted to stitch something in the poly neon three different weights. So you got the 40 weight, the 60 weight, and the 75 weight. So again, I took this um, into the software that we have and reduced the size of the design. Um, but made sure that I kept the amount of stitches. So um, very pretty scrolly um, design. This is done in poly, um, poly neon number 40 on the left-hand side. Um, that silver or gray that you see on the swirls is poly neon number 40 as well. Poly neon does have a beautiful shine to it. Um, so when you take a picture, it actually made it look like it was a little more metallic um, than it, it, but it is actually the polyester thread. Uh, so 
three color design. Um, I took some bold colors, put it on light fabric, stitched it out in the 40 weight. Obviously it's going to come out really nice. And then I wanted to see what it would look like. So I put it down, um, 80% and um, for the 68 and stitched it out with the 68 with a 65 nine needle and you can see it maintained the registration the details look exactly the same um, I can assure you we did not just shrink the photos uh, for this to work we have this um, available to view um, all together as well uh, but then went back again put it down to 65% of the design size and use that even thinner thread with the poly neon number 75. Um, I did use a smaller 65 nine needle um, with a 75 as well and it's like they're identical designs it just held itself together very well and um, <clears throat> Nancy is it is it am I correct in thinking the answer to the, the question that just came in is that the stitch count remains the same in each one of those designs? That's correct. And it's important whether you're doing it at the machine or within your software that you might have um, for viewing it and being able to reduce it is that, yes, you want to maintain um, the same amount of stitches within the design. So essentially, I would be buying one design um, and then I can adjust it as I needed to. If I wanted it to be a little smaller, I wanted it to be a little more intricate by putting it down to 65% of the design, same amount of stitches um, that I can actually stitch out a smaller version of the original size. So Tamara, um, the one that's all the way on the left, 100% uh, you designed that for 40 weight thread. What would you say the size of that design is? I think that's a five by seven. Five by seven. So I'm not that good in math, but a five by seven, um, if you were to reduce that um, by 20%, that's how much smaller the picture in the middle is going to be. Yeah. And then if you reduced it again so that 100% at 40 weight is only 65% of uh, the five by seven, you can tell um, even better than. Uh, and we're trying to show you here how much smaller that's getting in in 75 weight thread I it's amazing it's like embroidering with hair almost <laughs> it's so thin it gives you so much detail and those little kind of bead stitches that uh, Tamara was talking about before are so intricate um, that that's unfortunately the best way we can describe I think what you see here, what you're seeing on your monitor is what you get. Um, the, the reducing in the size is um, actual when you're looking at the 40 weight compared to the 60 weight compared to the 75. These, um, these images were literally cropped from the same photo, uh, photographs. Um, we didn't resize them or anything. Um, so as you see, the design gets smaller and smaller. Um, like Tamara said, the bigger one is probably a five by seven in total height and width, and the 75 is probably uh, somewhere around like a four inch by five inch type, you know, um, size roughly. Um, we can get that information for you um, just so that you can have it. Um, but what you're seeing here is truly, you know, the differences in the size, and it, it literally looks like we took that 100% and shrunk the photo. Um, so I think it's a great example of what you can um, achieve. When it comes to this machine, uh, sorry, the speed of the machine, um, as with any specialty threads, slowing it down just a little bit more than what you normally do. Um, I actually very often forget to slow the machine down and most often it'll run well. So if, you're, if you run it, if you find that it's running well, at your normal speed, then certainly you don't need to change it. If you find that you've got the correct needle um, and everything else is good, especially the tension, um, try slowing it down if you're having an issue. Question came in about, um, good question, why would you want to use 60 weight, 75 weight? Um, because it is so much thinner. Um, from some of the customers that we have talked with, where they're doing logos, 
Um, I'm thinking of one embroiderer in particular, Rich Medcraft, who has helped us and helped our customers over the years. Um, he is a very strong advocate of the 60 and the 75 weight thread. And the reason is that you can accomplish a look that other embroiderers who don't work with 60 weight cannot. And when we talked a little bit about pricing, um, specialty threads are going to cost you a little bit more than uh, your regular general purpose everyday 40 weight thread in classic rayon or poly neon might, but you are going to produce a result that others are not going to be able to do. Um, whether you choose to, to add 10, 20 percent onto your pricing or just be able to hold up a, a sample for your customers that they will not see in other places because your competition doesn't know how to use this thread, you're going to find that you're establishing a repeat business, that you'll have customer loyalty. Um, you're going to make your customers look good because the results will be so much finer than other threads, just other embroiders sticking to regular 40 weight thread. So some embroiders, depending on what your, uh, what your, whether you do embroidery as a vocation or an avocation, you are going to find that um, that these threads give you alternatives to simply choosing different colors. You're going to see textures. You're going to get um, design. I guess uh, you saw some of them on Tamara's designs, and also on this example that that Nancy's showing, and on the on the giraffe that the design is clearer, um, that embroidery is capable of producing very fine detail that you might not have thought that it could or your customers didn't think that it could because of not trying um, the 60 weight thread yet. Uh, question, how long is this webinar? <laughs> well, we usually, <laughs> we usually run about an hour and we are about uh, 40, 50 minutes into it. Um, we're trying to catch up with questions now. We only have a, a few more slides, um, and we are also recording the webinar. It will be available to everyone either as a recording or as a, a printable version, so don't worry if you have to leave early. Uh, yes, question, do you need to let a digitizer know if you want to use a 60 weight if you're digitizing a logo? Yes, they'll need to know that because of the density. That's correct. Yeah, um, density, um, density and stitch length um, benefits um, changing those for um, your logo. So you're going to get a clearer um, stitch out if you let your digitizer know that. Um, so the the, um, the premise of for this webinar is where. I'm kind of showing you and people who don't use digitizers and if you're going to use stock designs on a regular um, basis, it's just, you know, we're trying to show you how you can simply throw in that specialty thread and have a big impact in, in the look of the design. But and so would you use 60 weight thread on a structured cap? Is it strong enough to with yes. Those? Yep. Um, so for caps, very often you're going to use the polyester thread so it doesn't fade um, because caps are worn out in the sun quite a bit. So not only could you use the 60 weight thread, you could also use the frosted mat. <clears throat> and um, some people even use metallic threads on caps, but certainly to get that detail. Um, Alice mentioned Rich Medcraft being an advocate for the 60 weight thread and the 75 weight thread. The way he describes it, um, especially when you're using the black 60 weight thread, it's like using, it's like sharpening your pencil when you're drawing and you can get those fine lines within the design. So that's the effect that you can get with the 60 weight thread. One more question, um, and uh, shame on us for not mentioning it up front. Is this a good thread to use for small lettering? It's ideal for small lettering. and. Yeah. Some of the examples that we've seen. Tamara, are you thinking of something in particular? Yeah, I was thinking about the small lettering. I was going to try and jump in. And yeah, because it, it makes it a lot clearer. It makes it much more um, detailed. It, it, it makes it a lot clearer when you use it on lettering, small lettering. 
Absolutely. And yeah, so think of those the logos. Right. Think of those slogans that uh, many companies have underneath their logos. Um, they're very small lettering. You can get clarity out of not just the 60 weight thread, but consider your frosted mat thread as well. Slightly thinner than your typical 40 weight rayon or polyester. Um, and without the shine, the high definition of those colors lends itself well to the small lettering too. Okay, uh, we're going to, to wrap this up now. I've got two more slides left. This is simply a list of um, the thread, the specialty threads that Nancy and Tamara spoke about today. Um, these are obviously threads that are manufactured by Madeira. Um, we can answer um, our, our customer sales and support people can answer any questions you might have on them. Um, and also the easy cutaway, wash away that was mentioned in doing the freestanding lace ornament that Tamara did. Um, this next and last slide is going to be important to you. Uh, we approached Tamara and we approached our friends at Dakota Collectibles and said at the end of this webinar, we would love to have a special to thank um, our customers and our prospects for spending an hour with us. And so on this slide, you see a special from Madeira USA, as well as creations by Kara and Dakota Collectibles. Um, I also want to point out, I think we I think we covered pretty much, we answered everyone's questions for the most part in this hour. Um, but I do want to mention that the webinar was recorded. It will be available in a printable version as well. And all of you will be receiving an email that will give you links. So you just have to click on it if you want to visit Cara, Dakota, Madeira, uh, click on the link click on the link to the recorded version of the webinar or the printable version. And there's also one handout. What was that on? Yeah, three handouts. Two Tensioning handouts. and the needles. Tensioning and needles that will be available to you as well. Um, so at this point, I would like to thank all of you for spending um, part of your afternoon with us. Uh, Tamara, thank you so, so much uh, for the information that you shared. Um, very valuable new friend here for Madeira and Nancy. Well, well thank you. <laughs> and, um, thank you so much. <laughs> I can tell from some of the comments that came in, not so much questions, but comments that uh, people are familiar with your work and they um, are very appreciative of it and have a lot of respect for it. Oh, good. I'm glad to hear that. We work really hard on it. I'm sure. Uh, Nancy, thank you again for sharing a lot of knowledge and information. I encourage people to call our customers sales and support. Um, if you have any questions about working with this um, specialty thread, they can help you. If your question is extremely difficult, they will give you over to Nancy and she can help you. So again, thank you. Take advantage of our specials and we will um, appreciate your time. Thank you.